fellas how are you doing good it's a beautiful day thank you very much for stopping by you are very much appreciated i hope there's enough light in here you know i'll do lots of things for you guys i hope you do the same for me though okay, like if i say send me money you know like contribute one dollar one dollar per person okay, would you do it like just send me the money and stuff <laughs> thank you very much very much appreciate i don't know who you are my name is zach thank you very much for choosing us uh if you're first time please click on the button subscribe so we can see each other every day so today we're going to talk about something very interesting like we always do we talk about our people we talk about the african people we talk about black people in general we talk about the diaspora we talk about business we talk about geopolitics it's very important that we talk about these things because we are just tired of mainstream media lies we need to see our own things we know this propaganda on the side and propaganda on that side we need to look at both propagandas and pull our own conclusions now cyril ramaphosa president of south africa great man has stood very strong and says and called for the united Nations reform on sunday stating before general assembly that the security council is clearly no longer fit to address contemporary challenges He was basically talking about what's happening in the Security Council. It is an opportunity also to make good on the promises to reform the global governance architecture, including the international finance institutions and the United Nations Security Council, placing the fate of the world's security in the hands of a select few when it is the vast majority of the peoples of the world who bear the brunt of the various threats is unjust, unfair, and unsustainable. I don't know if you remember, but a few days ago, America came up with a plan to allow Africans to have a seat on the United Nations Security Council. What is the United Nations Security Council? First of all, what is the United Nations? The United Nations was created after World War II with the goal of preventing bad things, the genocide, all negative things that happened during World War II from happening again. The goal was to bring the nations together to try to work together. But unfortunately, yeah, they failed that mission, eh? Because very quickly they became enemies of the Russians and stuff. Anyway, then they created the United Nations Security Council. The United Nations Security Council is a group of special countries. Yes, they're special. Why? Because initially it was the countries that supposedly won World War II two against germany therefore united states of america united kingdom russia and china was invited then they had france added on to that now these countries decide for everybody what is the security council's goal their goal is to make sure that everything is cool no fighting with each other no occupying other countries territory respecting human rights and many other things of that sort however the United Security Council holds more power, which is called the veto power. The veto power is basically, if all of you guys say yes, I say no, we're gonna go for no. Why? Because I have the veto power. I'm like the boss. So if all of you say we're gonna eat rice and potatoes, and I say no, you're not eating rice and potato, you're eating fufu. All of you, it doesn't matter whether you're 20 or 40 countries or 50 countries. If America say you're going to eat fufu, you are eating fufu, you're not eating rice and potato. I don't know if you can eat rice and potato together anyway. Yeah, that's what it is. So that's the veto power five countries have. They are United States of America, United Kingdom, Russia, China, and France. So, unfortunately, many of these countries have used their veto power sometimes for the negative. You know, like asking for war to end in Gaza, America vetoed, so the war in Gaza must continue. Sometimes going to investigate what's happening in Syria uh, based on negative things that happen, Russia vetoes it and you can't go investigate. So, people now use veto power for their own purposes. Now, for many, many years, many presidents of Africa have come forward saying we need to have rights to the United Council Security Council because we can't just be here looking at you while you're guiding us. We're not your children. Mohammed Gaddafi said it. We are tired. What is this? He told the little paper of the United Nations. So we cannot live in a society where one country is leading everybody. You know which country it is. One country thinks it's the police of the world. One country can decide what happens, whether they're going to be in war or not. And he was unalived later on. 
now the Security Council is, is, is a, uh, security feudalism, uh, political feudalism for those who have a permanent seats, protected by, the, by them and they, they are used against them against us. It's not should be should not be called the Security Council, it should be called the Terror Council. There was the Zimbabwean president Robert Mugabe that also mentioned the same thing. He said we cannot continue this way. We need space. We need respect. Watch what he had to say. We are supposed to be free and independent, Mr Ban Ki moon. But the bosses in the Security Council say you shall never have the powers that we have as permanent members. And we have asked and asked and asked and asked and asked reform, reform the Security Council. And obviously, even though many people have claimed that they have asked Africa to be allowed to be part of the United Nations Security Council, it has been declined. Unfortunately, I mean, Africa is about 1.3 billion human beings. That's a lot of human beings. Not being represented in the United Nations Security Council is... It just feels like a brand new colonialism, doesn't it? That we have nobody to defend our cause. Because if they decide they're going to bomb Malawi, it doesn't matter whether 54 African countries say don't bomb Malawi. If one of the people in the United Nations Security Council say let's go bomb Malawi, then the United Nations accept bombing Malawi. Does that even make any sense? It doesn't. What does it give? It gives we are superior to you people. We are better than you people. We have better brains. Now, a couple of days ago, America came up with a plan. They said, okay, we've heard your cries. Now we're going to give you space. We're going to give you two seats in the Security Council. Everybody went, yay! But hold on a second. No, it's not going to be two seats like us. You're going to have two seats in rotation every two years. And on top of that, you're not having veto power. As it stands, there are currently three non-permanent seats on the Security Council allocated to African countries on a rotating basis for two years. The problem is these elected seats don't enable African countries to deliver the full benefit of their knowledge and voices to the work of the Council, to consistently lead on the challenges that affect all of us and disproportionately affect Africa. Meaning, you're just going to sit with us on the same table while we're talking about how we're going to execute, but you cannot say A or B because whatever you say doesn't matter. Yeah, they said it in your face. Now, like I always say before, before they do anything to Africa, before they impose anything to Africa, before they try to convey you to have a mentality in Africa, they will bring an African-American person to speak to you. That's what they do. Let's go back in time. When they came up to Africa, say every country in Africa that's going to support Russia is going to be the enemy of America. They brought the black face. Now, they're bringing you an idea. Okay, we're going to let you in the big people club. You can come sit here with us while we're drinking our champagne. You can just watch. But uh, don't complain about it because we already made a big step to allow you, you know, you're not supposed to be here. You should be grateful you can sit around us. They brought a black face. So it doesn't look racist. So it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, that's a good way to, you know, after all, it's somebody that looks just like you that's telling you you shouldn't do that. So maybe there's a reason to that. Yeah, it's like when they want you to have the, you know, when that thing came across and they want you to have, sh they brought you black faces. You got to do this for the next person so you don't feel like it's oppression. It's a tactic and a strategy. Now, Cyril Ramaphosa said no out of most presidents in Africa. He said, we cannot accept this. This is unacceptable. He says, placing the fate of the world security in the hand of a select few when it is the majority who bears the brunt of this threat is unjust, unfair and unsustainable. So in other words, in very good English, I think in very mature English, don't take us for the, <laughs> like don't take us for, yeah, we're not stupid, okay? We're not second grade citizens of the world. Who do you think we are? You think we're going to come and say, oh, thank you. Oh, seat at the Security Council, two years rotation, but we have nothing to say here. Like, who do you think we are? Like, who do you think we are? It's unbelievable. And then they wonder why these people don't know who to choose between them and the Russians. I mean, come on. Africa has gone through so much. When South Africa was going through apartheid, most Western nations supported the apartheid government. Should I repeat that? That was just 1994. Most of us were grown. 
when South Africa was going through apartheid, where black people could not go to restaurants with white people, black people could not attend schools where white people studied, where black people could not marry white people, the Western nations supported the apartheid government, sent them money, funds, help them develop weapons and most more, more yeah now don't you think it's about time you're trying to make things different and we're just talking about south africa there. what about other african nations and the things they've been through it's so much if you really are fair people and you really want justice and equality then you should you can't be saying like that what that lady said what did she say we will give you a seat at the security council but we cannot give you veto power because by giving you veto power we're going to mess up the structure so in other words if we give you veto power then we don't have much power anymore yeah because then we have to share the power now we want you to stay there so we can have the power so we can decide where we bomb so we can decide which country like lebanon is being bombed right now do you know that nobody here talking nothing about it yeah. are you telling me there's no innocent people in lebanon i'm just saying what kind of world is this props to the president of south africa cyril ramaposa cyril ramaposa for speaking out we cannot accept this and it's just very sad you still see <laughs> I'm pissed off. God bless.